Hey everyone! I was gonna make an entirely different video today, but last night something happened, so I decided to make this video instead. Last night, Sami accidentally ripped off his claw. Um, if that sounds scary, it's because it is. Thankfully, he's fine. As you can see, he's doing okay. He's gonna be okay. Um, he's just in a little bit of pain right now and he has to wear this cone for a few days. I thought that it would be useful to make this video because I think there are a lot of people out there who don't know about this, just like I didn't. I mean, I had no idea that this could even happen. Like, a dog's claw can just fall off. I'm not talking broken here, I'm talking just completely falling off. So I'm gonna tell you how this happened, why it happened, uh, what we did to manage it, and I want you to be prepared in case this ever happens with your dog. I hope it never does, but in case this should happen, I, I don't want you to panic like I did last night. So before we dive into it, if you find this video useful, make sure you give it a like. It will help our channel a lot. And if you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button because I'm gonna be posting videos like this. Well, not quite like this, more fun than this, hopefully. But I'm posting videos of Westie dogs every week, so make sure you don't miss them. So here's the story of what happened. Last night we were getting ready for bed um, and Sami has this routine where he climbs his little stairs to bed um, and he gets in bed with us. Just that last night he was in a hurry and instead of climbing them properly from the front, he came from the side, from the lateral. Um, he was in a rush so he, he was climbing. I was looking right at him when he, when he did it and he seemed to be tripping mid midway. Um, and I heard a click sound that I didn't quite process. I didn't know what it was, but I just saw him trip and then he just kept going um, and like nothing happened. So he just climbed in bed and lay down, you know, not a peep, not a sound, nothing. So five minutes later, my partner noticed, noticed that there's blood um, on the bed, on the sheet coming from his paw. So he was just like, why is Sami's paw bleeding? So I picked him up, I went to the bathroom with him, um, I had a look and he's just, blood was coming out. I'm sorry for the graphic image. So I had a closer look at his paw and I noticed that his nail was missing. Um, so I just instinctively, I looked towards the stair um, and there it was, underneath the stair, you could clearly see his claw on the floor which clearly, when he jumped the stairs from the lateral side, he must have gotten his claw caught between the stair and the wooden structure, and his claw just got ripped off. Um, so I, I just freaked out a little bit. I had no idea how to process this. Um, I was a little bit in shock. I was sitting on the floor of the bathroom, Sami in, in my arms, and my partner was asking me, should we drive him to the vet? What should we do? So I thought about it for a second. It was midnight. I didn't know if any vet hospital was gonna be open, but I said, sure, you know, let's drive him to the vet and hopefully it's gonna be open because I just didn't know what else to do. So we took Sami, we got in our car, we drove to the vet. We have a veterinary hospital that is 10 minutes away. Um, it's not the usual clinic that I take Sami to, but I thought that this is the only one that's gonna be open at midnight. So I don't think that any of us uh, said a word on the drive there. We were just in shock and just hoping that everything is gonna be okay. So we get there and it seemed to be closed. The lights were off and nobody seemed to be there. So the next thing that I could think of was just pick up the phone and call our vet. Uh, she has an emergency number that she always answers to. So I just called her, explained the situation, told, told her that Sami lost uh, one of his claws and he's bleeding and I don't know what to do. So she said that she can come into the clinic or that I can just take care of this at home. She said that this is quite common, that it happens with dogs um, and it's nothing to worry too much about as long as he's not, you know, hemorrhaging um, a lot of blood. So she told me that the first thing I need to do is disinfect the wound 
uh, using betadine, which is basically a disinfectant with iodine. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. Um, but I had this at home, so she said dilute it with a little bit of water because otherwise it's too strong and it burns. Um, and just disinfect the wound to make sure that it doesn't get infected. And then apply antibiotic cream on the wound and put uh, wrap it in a bandage to make sure that it stops the bleeding. So I had all of these things at home, so I, I said, okay, thanks, I'm gonna do that. Um, I'm gonna stay calm and I can do this. In the meantime, by the time I, I hung up, my partner was looking at the glass at the window of the vet hospital that we were still in front of, and he noticed that there was a 24 seven sign um, and that you can actually ring the bell and there's someone on call. So we thought, you know, as long as we're still here, we might as well just go in and have Sami checked by an actual doctor. So we went in, there was a doctor on call who could see Sami right away, which was great news. They did say that it was gonna be more expensive because of the emergency fee, 58 euros for the consultation, which is roughly double than what I normally pay for a consultation to the vet. So this was fine, you know, I just wanted Sami to be okay. And I was also hoping that maybe he's gonna get some painkillers, um, which I don't have at home. The doctor came, she, she took Sami with her in the cabinet. Um, I wasn't allowed to go. Um, I had to wait outside. I did hear him cry a little bit as she was disinfecting the wound. But, you know, 10 minutes later, uh, she brought him out. She, she did exactly what my vet told me. She disinfected the wound with betadine. She put some antibiotic cream um, on it and then she wrapped it in a bandage. She told me to keep the, the bandage overnight just to make sure that um, there's no hemorrhaging and that I can take it off in the morning and just let it uh, air out. Um, she said that actually keeping a wound like that uh, with a bandage on for too long can um, create some bacteria and it can lead to infection. So she said that um, as long as he's not bleeding tomorrow, uh, there's no need for, uh, for a bandage. She said that because it's a highly vascularized area that it could be painful. So she gave me some painkillers to give Sami um, for two days just to make sure that he's okay, that he's not in too much pain. Um, she told me that I should disinfect the wound twice a day with either betadine or chlorhexidine and apply antibiotic cream after that. And other than that, she said that it's gonna heal, the nail will probably grow right back, which is something that I, I didn't expect. I thought that he was gonna um, be, you know, without a nail. But she said, no, it's probably gonna grow back, so I, I don't have to worry. She did say that one of the main reasons why this happens is when the dog's nails are too long and they get caught easily in stuff like the stair um, and they can just get ripped off like it happened with Sami. So truth be told, I, I hadn't uh, trimmed his nails in a while. I kept postponing it. I, I wanted to do it last week and you know, I just, I didn't do it. So probably had I trimmed his nails on time, this wouldn't have happened. Um, so I'm hoping that this will be useful for you as well. If you keep procrastinating with trimming or cutting your dog's nails, um, it's quite important to do it regularly. So thankfully, all was okay. Um, honestly, I was super relieved when we left the vet because I, it was a lot to process and it was quite scary and, you know, quite stressful and I didn't know if he was gonna be okay. So just the fact that he got all the treatment that he needed and um, that the vet assured me that he's gonna be fine, I just, I was, I was happy, I gotta say. Like, I, I was really thankful um, that it wasn't worse. So we ended up paying 60 euros, including the painkillers, which was just um, totally worth it. And we took Sami home and put him to bed. He was quite tired, so he just slept through the night, no problem. And today, as you could see earlier, he's, he's doing a lot better. He walks normally, he can put weight on his paw. 
Um, he does protect it quite a bit because it's still raw and painful. So every time I put disinfectant and cream on it, he's very uncomfortable, he's in pain. Um, so that's probably the most unpleasant thing right now. Um, but I think it's gonna be okay in a few days. So the one thing that I still can't get over is the fact that he didn't make a peep when this happened. Like he just, it just looked like he tripped on the stair and then he just kept going, climbed on the bed and lay down to sleep, you know? He didn't bark, he didn't whine, he didn't cry. Um, and I just don't, I can't quite wrap my mind around that. How, how could he not complain? Because I'm sure it was painful. Um, and it actually makes me wonder how many other times he's hurt, he's in some sort of pain and he gives no sign of pain at all. So that's just something that is a little bit hard to, to accept, I guess. So everything is okay in the end. Um, Sami is fine, as you can see. He's just gonna have to wear this cone for a few days just to make sure that he doesn't lick his paw. This is what his paw looks like right now. It's already looking a lot better than it did this morning. Um, and it's, it's slowly healing. If you've been watching this far, um, I hope you found this video useful. Leave me a comment and tell me what you thought about it. Um, was this news to you or did you know that this can happen with dogs? And I think Sami wants to go for his walk now. <laughs> it's already a little bit late in the evening. Thank you for watching. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and we'll see you next week. Bye bye.